that's for a CDL. You're going for a job. That's why you got the CDL. And the job, you're going to be in a truck and trailer you've never ever been in. Probably nothing that you've ever driven before. And on a on a facility you've never been at. And here's the parameters. You have to get it done and completed in order before you get a job. <laughs> Just truck it. Sorry. <laughs> Just truck it with Sean and Scylla. Yeah, yo. Yeah. And on this segment, we're really going to talk about what happens after school. Oh, I thought we were just on here to look pretty. I got no makeup on today, so we're not. But. Well, I mean, I wasn't going to go that far. Wow. Yeah. I mean, hey, if we, if we telling all of this behind the scenes, wow. wait for the behind the scenes. Well, you know what? You're just a guy who has a beard, so that's why you don't worry about the makeup. All right? Hey, don't, 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 don't be jealous. This doesn't look good on you. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, after school, what happens, Sean? What ends up after your three, four week process of whatever school you attended, whatever program you attended? Well, I mean, uh, first and foremost, whatever school you're going to, company, uh, sponsor training, uh, public school uh, of, you know, institution of some sort, private school, um, you're going through training there and to get the training. Okay. okay. Um, the Board of Education for those types of schools and everything that, that are governing those are just worried about the training and the teaching and the schooling and getting through the program. And you're tested at the program for the school and then after that that's when you get your cdl test you know done and those are two kind of separate things so you know and and that's where uh, you kind of know a little bit about that too so so in my in how i am able to explain it to people it's kind of like when you said it earlier with real estate or if you went to school to be a doctor or a lawyer or you went to school for anything at the end of it once you complete your pro program you still either a have to uh, set your own appointment to take that exam right to get actually certified to be a real estate agent or actually certified to be a doctor or um, a lawyer you have to still have that appointment now some schools are awesome like us, no, I'm just kidding. Um, who have who add that to the program itself? So we allow or we help test or take you to test for those things. However, those we do want to advise everyone that those are two separate entities in itself. Yeah, so just just like you you went to like you said the doctor lawyer. I mean, I could have gotten um, you know great grades 4.0 been you know top of my class at vanderbilt or harvard or something like that and then at the end not be able to pass my exam to become that particular you know type of person um because i couldn't pass the test but i got great grades you know that those are some things that you know you have to do on your own as far as being tests prepared, uh, anxiety, nerves, things like that, and be able to get through it. Because usually, you know, if I was to tell you I got a 4.0 to become a doctor and I failed my test and I never became a doctor, you'd look at me kind of crazy. Well, you know, those things do happen quite a bit because I got great grades in school to be a truck driver, but yet I couldn't handle someone with the clipboard out there watching me do it. You know, that the pressure and the stress uh, ha happens to everyone different. Yeah, you know? in the same in like real estate, as I said earlier, you know, you can be perfect grades while you're in real estate class. It's a three week class sometimes and you're doing great and you're all gung ho. But then you fail the real estate exam three, four times. Doesn't mean you need to stop. No, you should keep going. You should try to get over those nerves that started. You should be able to, like you were saying, just having that confidence because you know it. You had that 4.0, you had that um, 3.8. You did so great while you're there. Don't let 
the testing nerves. And I know we talk about it in a separate video, um, but don't let those type of things stop you from completing that exam. But always know that they are separate. And if you find programs or if you find schools that have them together, amazing. But always know those are those two are separate in their own entities, just as every other company or every other uh, industry whatsoever. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So then after that, uh, um, honestly, OK, I got my CDL. I've gone through course. Everything's popping. I'm ready to go to work, ready to make some money. You know, um, uh -oh. you're going to have to go to a trucking company or, you know, uh, yeah, a trucking company. And you're going to have to go through an orientation process. Uh, usually the orientation process can be anywhere from one day to a whole week to sometimes even longer. Hold on, hold on. I know we talk about this in every single one of our videos. What's the one thing they're going to do during orientation? I mean, first and foremost, they're going to run through everyone because they have to, everybody that get, comes there has to have a drug screen done before they hire that person with them and their doctor, as well as the physical gets done as well, again, with them and their doctor. Um, so you're going to, you're going to go through a whole nother P test. Some, some do hair follicle, uh, each company is different. Uh, I know we talk about that with, uh, Maryland and, uh, 10th street, you yes. know, and also Matt on one and video. what is it called? A DAC report. Oh, they, they run all that. Yeah. They run all that before you get there, but the drug screen physical, first and foremost, they, you might show up in a class of a hundred people there in orientation and you're going to start seeing the ones drop like flies because they thought that, Hey, I could, uh, you know, after school and I pass my drug screen, I can then go back to doing my old routine and then, oh crap, I got to do another one. And they sometimes bring, you know, someone else's, you know, uh, testing materials. And it's pretty funny, uh, you know, them dropping out like five. I remember when I went to orientation, we started out like 50 people in class and only five of us got in the truck at the end because they're also going to run through uh, and do a road test and skills test. You know, some people have gone um, to places that do exist in, in, in this country where they've paid for their CDL. You know, I know that's kind of crazy, but, you know, there's always a scam out there. There's always someone, you know, the working. Black market. Yeah. And, and someone, you know, th that's why I think in, in Florida a couple of years ago, there was like 5,000 CDLs that got suspended, canceled or revoked because of things like that. Um, so that does happen in every state. And, uh, um, they want to make sure that the training you got at the school um, was legit before they put you out there driving their vehicle. So they're going to run through in the truck. And by the way, I hear excuses all the time when people test, you know, where, oh, I didn't I didn't get a lot of practice in this truck or, hey, I didn't get a lot of practice on this type of parking lot, you know, that I'm testing at um, this, that and the other. Well, that's for a CDL. You're going for a job. That's why you got the CDL and the job. You're going to be in a truck and trailer you've never ever been in probably nothing that you've ever driven before and on a on a facility you've never been at and here's the parameters you have to get it done and completed in order before you get a job you know at least a basic understanding so you know those are going to be some things that you're going to get done um, before they actually put you in the truck with a trainer yeah that's why it's definitely stressful situations yeah. that you were talking about of why you go in with 50 people and you end up leaving with about just 10 of you. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is you got to think about it from a business aspect. Um, insurance can be very high um, and liability risk and things like that. You also have customers that you have to make sure that you deliver to in, in a tam timely manner uh, as well as professionally. So what they do is they, they really try to make the orientation a, a stressful situation. Um, in the sense of, uh, I know one company made the students bring all of their belongings, their suitcase and everything every single day from the hotel room to orientation. So they would bring that on the bus and then they would, at the end of the day, take it back to their room um, because they would move them into different rooms with different people, creating a stressful environment to see how people react. Because if you react, you know, negative in, in such a small situation, how are you going to be when you're out there and delays, traffic, weather issues, things can pile up and, and how do you react 
um, could could set them in an unprofessional manner in front of other people. Now, I definitely um, just thought about this, but how about, I mean, trucking is so needed. They need so many truck drivers. Why are they making it so difficult? I don't understand then what's the point of making it so difficult um, if they're needing us so bad. Okay, well, I mean, let's just go back in time to um, companies. If you look up nuclear verdict, that that, that word, okay, um, nuclear verdict, where they've gotten sued uh, from somebody where the person driving the truck was actually not at fault sometimes. Okay in the accident but they should never have hired that person or they made some bad decisions along the way that they should have been let go for okay and because of that had that person never been hired that they wouldn't have been there and if they wouldn't have been there the accident wouldn't have happened and then they've they've had to pay out 100 200 million dollars okay or they might lose a, a contract because i've seen firsthand where working at a trucking company where someone was just having such a bad day okay. that they went in to the customer and cussed out the entire staff working there uh, because their load wasn't ready and to the point where that company called us back and said hey we just don't want to deal with you guys anymore your people are very unprofessional they're leaving you know uh, piss bottles out by the trucks there there's trash everywhere they're coming in they're yelling and cussing us out you, you know those kind of situations um yeah they want drivers yes but they want quality drivers they want professional drivers they want somebody that's going to represent them in a way of any business i mean yeah. if you go into you know mcdonald's tomorrow to, to order you know um and the people there um smell really bad and they're cussing and and representing the company wrong you might not go you might go back to mcdonald's but you might not go back to that mcdonald's you know and that's the situation you don't want employees that represent you negatively um so you know i might be desperate and i might make some allowances but hey trucking is is still very old school and if it ain't broke don't fix it and if it this whole time we've always done this in this way, like I mean, think about the military. Um, in the military, they, they they're not going to every person that signs up for the military is not going to make it through their basic, not going to make it through their training. They're not going to make it in the end. Um, they're going to find out maybe this ain't for them, and so they try that weeding out process, that vetting process, um, very early on. Uh, you know, kind of kick you down the hill and, and whatever rises, whatever cream rises to the top, you know, that's what we're going to stick with. And that, and that kind of okay. is, is, is a little crazy, but that's how it usually works. Okay. Well, then that definitely goes to the point of you have to prove yourself while you're with the in orientation. I mean, yes, you are almost as great as diamonds out there, but at the same time, as you're saying, you still have to prove yourself. You still have to be dependable. You still have to be on time. Mm -hmm. um, and the stressful situations I'm talking about, like the hotel or other things, um, they're also very key to safety, okay? Think about um, every drug company out there has a zero tolerance on drugs and alcohol, especially during duty, okay? So you're there in orientation there, and then the next day you got to be there again. You're only having so many hours that you're off. They have a zero tolerance on drugs and alcohol during that time. Um, and they know that the hotel is across the street from the, the local bar, grill, or restaurant. And they have a relationship with that, that business because they've been there so long and so many people go there that, hey, tell us if any of our guys are drinking or doing things. Or, you know, I know this is a while back, but I remember a, a member of the staff of the company was in orientation posing as a student, trying to get students to do things they shouldn't be doing, um, just to see what people do after no one's watching. Wow, okay, well, there's that. Yeah. I mean, I didn't think it was gonna be that intense. I mean, if you get drunk uh, uh, during orientation, and no, you, you show can't up, even handle, yeah, you can't. How even, can you handle working? Yeah, you're gonna be on the road all day. Then you're gonna what? Drink in the truck or or something, yeah. and you could get in a, an accident, or you know, you can get a ticket. You know, there's a lot of things that could really happen. You know. Okay. 
as well. I feel like that's also the same thing as when they're on the road with trainers. Yeah. Yeah. Just as much. Just um, they're, you know, they're, they're watching you also. I'm oh, assuming. yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and you know what? Uh-huh. Training is one of those type of things that is a very touchy subject because of the trainers. I mean, of course. In any any business, you teach your staff how to how to train or how to uh, you know to get people where they need to be, and, and it's not you actually doing it. You know, I I personally can't be out there instructing every single student in every phase. You know, I have employees or staff members to do that that I've trained. So. A trainer go th- goes through a training process um, to become a trainer. And that's where, do they do it right? Do they do they have bad habits? Do they have things that they do that, you know, are not professional? You know, that, that's going to happen. You know, there is a high chance of that. Um, and, and, and that's where, you know, it's a situation that's not the company. Okay. And a lot of people take, okay, my trainer, you know, was horrible. So I'm going to leave and go to another company. <laughs> uh, this is the funniest story ever. Uh, and this happened. Um, right. I, I had a student that it, it is, it's like a, it's like a lottery shot, you know, that this happened. Okay. Uh, what, what are the chances of winning the lottery? Um, what is it? You will get bit by a shark and hit struck by lightning at the same time. You're more likely to get yeah. bit by a shark and struck by lightning at the same time before you can win the lot Right. And, and that's the, and that's the kind of odds in this kind of thing, but it it did happen, you know, okay. and people do win the lottery. So okay. um a, a guy had a really bad um time with the trainer and then really held it in, but then eventually, you know, got with the company, told the company, um, and the company, you know, was going to demote the guy back to a regular driver, he's gonna make less money. Uh, the driver didn't like that and was really upset, um, you know, the trainer. And so he left. He quit the company. Uh, a couple weeks later, the student quit the company as well, even though they changed the trainer. They got him, you know, taken care of. They appreciated him communicating. Um, and I had tried to tell him, hey, don't quit. You know, the trainer isn't necessarily the issue. I mean, he's necessarily the company's not necessarily the issue. Maybe the trainer just was, you know. Um, and you're going to find out that, you know, things are about the same everywhere you go. Well, he left that company. He went to another company. Well, so by chance did the trainer. And it takes a couple of weeks to go through the orientation and everything. Well, that that trainer had already done that. OK, so when the new student okay, got up. to the new company, goes to meet with his trainer, there is his old trainer. I'm dead. You can't even make that up. Oh, my God. What happened? I wonder. Did you request a new guy? Well, I mean, that's a situation where, you know, jumping ship sometimes in your first six months ain't always a good decision. Okay. um, Because you're going to find out the the company you change to, usually just the faces change, but the same personalities and same type of things that happen, the same type of uh, pay, same type of trucks, same type... It's all it's all there, just a just a different sticker on the side, you know. Yeah. And you know, sometimes it's not what happened; it's how you fix it. So yeah. it's not that the trainer was bad and in a bad situation. It's how does the company fix it, you know? And that, that's what you got to realize. That makes sense. That makes sense. And then um, I know you were talking about you were just talking about jumping, but how about that paper chasing jumping? Oh, I see it all the time. You know, uh, isn't it so fun? It, it, I, to be honest, I somewhat did that in my early times too. You okay. Know? Um, I stuck it out for quite a while with my first company. I did, I did flatbed. I did, you know, over the road. I, I wanted a little bit more pay. Um, I ended up going to a company trying to do teaming because I heard they made more. And then I found out, you know, it wasn't for me and went back to the original company. You know, that's where sometimes you think or you're you're told that this is a better situation Um, and you keep chasing that better situation because you don't think that where you're at is good enough or give them the opportunity to give you more. You know, Um, you're not willing to put the time and effort in to get there, Mm -hmm. especially with new students, because they're either sold something um, and they don't know the industry yet uh, or they don't understand how the cents per mile and pay and things like that work. Um, yeah, I think that's the most important side. Once you have um, 
once you have actual experience, sure, you can get all these different yeah. pay rate ranges, completely different pay ranges from owner operator to lease purchase to um, XYZ. There's just so many different things. Tanker, hazardous material, yeah. covers, triples. Yeah, there's so Yeah, many. it goes down the line. But as a student or a person who has no experience other than at least 160 hours of student training. Yeah, it, it, what, a, lot, a lot can be what can, messed up. Yeah, my, is my, you know, me being, I guess, a blank slate in this, okay? Um, I guess I would assume whoever's throwing the biggest number in front of me, right? Yeah, and, and that's where the illusion comes from. Okay. Um, if, if the wheels aren't turning, you're not making money. Okay. A yeah, I mean that's the easiest way. I could offer you a dollar a mile as a new student, but if I only got ten miles to give you, how much really was that worth? Okay. Ten dollars. Well, <laughs> you offered them thirty cents a mile, which is really low, but you had three thousand miles. That's like a nine hundred dollar paycheck almost. Okay, that's a big difference. So. It's not always the highest cent per mile. It, it's also the actual mileage you're going to do. Now, sometimes you hear we guaranteed, um, guaranteed mileage, okay, or guaranteed pay or things like that. Those guaranteed, unless it's in writing and it's in front of you and, and it's guaranteed, like in writing, most of that is usually not true. It's a, it's an average, you know, the average national average for a first year driver. And this was done a couple of years ago. Obviously rates have changed a little bit uh, here in the last you know, year or two, uh, but it was 52,000 a year. So, you know, 52 weeks, it's about a thousand a week. You know, that's about an average that a driver is gonna make. So when they're told, hey, I, yeah, I can give you 1500 a week as a brand new student, that's almost unbelievable. You yeah. know, there, there's there gotta be some catch to it. There's gonna be something to it. Uh, and unless there's a guarantee it's just not going to happen so flatbed i did flatbed i love uh, flatbed you know that that's that's my background you know and i enjoyed it but there is a lot of hard work to it um it's not for someone that's just wanting to um drive and make their life easier their back hurts their their knees hurt things like that they're just wanting to drive and, and have a no manual labor but stressless job you know then that's not for them someone that hey can't sit still like myself hey that's more for you you know how uh but i'm not going to order steel or lumber from oregon if i live in tennessee okay, okay. if i can get it in alabama where most of the steel companies are um i get a better rate because it's not having to travel as far First. so in flatbed it's not really there's there's so many steel mills or so many you know lumber mills or so there's so much of that across the entire country that you're not going to long haul on a flatbed so there's gonna be shorter miles shorter miles mean more times you have to tarp or untarp or chain or strap or secure your cargo and then unsecure it um you might get paid for tarping um but usually Sometimes the stuff's already pre-tarped or, hey, um, may not be, need to be tarped. So you still have to secure the load. That takes, you know, an hour or two hours. And then when it's done, you have to undo everything that you don't get that pay again twice. You get it once. So yeah. you, now you, you have to end up, uh, you know, rolling everything back up, securing it all back up in your bunk, you know, uh, there's so, in your box. You know, there's so many things you got to do that take time away from the wheels aren't turning. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the unloading time, loading time, well, you have more deliveries because they're shorter distance. So you're gonna have more time that you're waiting to get loaded or unloaded. So the pay, what they have to do to be, you know, to, to you know, work with all the other companies and be competitive in the market, their pay might be 50 cents when a dry van might be 40 cents, you know, or, you know, vice versa. That, that's how that works is the higher the pay on that is because there's gonna be less miles. So understanding what kind of miles that company gives or does you know talk to drivers that work yeah. there and get an average of what their their miles that they get um and then base that off of the pay and you'll see kind of the average and then on top of it you know 
are there needed endorsements or things like that? Usually the more endorsements or more training that you need, obviously the higher the pay will be, but typically. Now, real quick though, when we say higher the pay, we're not talking about going from 52,000 to 80,000, no. is it? Okay, I just wanna, you know, once again, blank slate. I just wanna make sure we're saying the right things, right? We're talking about 52,000. So maybe 53,000 or 54,000. Know? No, I think it's a little more than that. Jeez. Well, I mean, um, you want to be realistic, okay? Well, You're really not going to make an extreme amount of money more no. than the other guy in the class with you. Yeah. Okay. It, it Even if that person is going to a second chance company, okay, uh, that may pay a little bit less, in the end of the year, there might be a couple hundred to a couple thousand dollar difference between the two. And in the long term, that really wasn't enough to justify. And the key here to justify jumping shit from companies to company, company and exactly. ruining the chance to make another 10, 20, 30,000 more in the future, yes. because that company won't hire you because you've had too many jobs. and You do not look reliable exactly. or loyal. That's the point of this is that with, in your first year, I mean, jumping ship just because of an extra thousand dollars a year, an extra two to three thousand dollars a year compared to or a hundred bucks a week more, two hundred bucks. It, yeah, it, it, it in the long run, it's going to cost you more money because you know, people don't realize, okay, I, I leave this company, well, I have to get hired by another company, which might take a week or two, okay. Then I got to go through the orientation, orientation all over again. Drug screening again. Yeah. And then I might have to go because I don't have enough time behind the wheel. Because let's say I've only was there for two or three months and I jump. Well, they might have to send me back out with a trainer again, making less money. Training pay again. So the loss in pay that I went through may have been three or four grand in the long run. How did that justify an extra 200 bucks a week? when that cost me four grand and pay. And then in the future, a company may not hire me for more money. Well, not just that. Now you've only had technically, right? Cause you've only been with the company for three months. You're still making three months experience pay versus the- Fresh start out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah cause some companies give you a, a penny raise at three months, another penny yeah. at six, you know, yeah. you know, there's, there's, there's a few incentives there. Yeah. there's. Um, and it's not a penny now. It's like 10, 20 cents raises every few months until you hit a year. And then you're leaving all of this just to restart everything. And you don't even, you still don't even have the experience yet. So definitely sticking to that at least good six solid six to a year mark so that you're able to have that in your background, almost like a clean resume, you know? Who goes to a job and has a six page resume? <laughs> Nobody. You're probably not going to get hired because they're like, this guy's not loyal. Yeah. He's Regardless jump ship. of how much. Yeah. He's going to jump ship the moment something gets stressful. Um, and then that's why it's good to just have, oh, look, he was at one job. I mean, we have a, our one of our instructors. He had one job for, I think, 10 years. He's seven years. Seven. Yeah. Seven years. I mean, how could you not want to hire him? And yeah, I was like, but the ones I, I, you know, got to meet him and talk to him, and, yeah. and he seemed very personable and, and knowledgeable. The, the, the resume was like, you know, who, who, who cares what's on there now? There's only one job. Uh, you know, who cares? I want this guy now. I like, hire him. You yeah. know, and that, that's where you know, in, in hiring drivers at a company, that was, the owner was more than likely willing to be more lenient with an accident or with a speeding ticket than he was with the amount of jobs you had. He was more about the loyalty you showed a company than the mistakes that you make, okay? Because everybody makes mistakes, but how you show your, your character is through your loyalty. Um, and and, and that's, that, that's a big reflection on the driver that companies are looking at. Yep. And we definitely have seen that even getting pre-hired. So if any companies are listening, let's do your pre-hires. But 
um, getting that pre-hire in, you know, some companies will, won't pre-hire you and they don't care about the background. You had a felony eight years ago, um, nothing, but you had four jobs in the last two years. Why? Or, you know, maybe right now it's a little different due to COVID and everything, but they still question. Yeah. Why did you have so many of these? Why? I mean, we've had guys get disqualified because they had a long time of being off in 2018. And it's just, that's how they see just your loyalty is more important than your drug possession in 2000. Yeah. And then segueing into that, um, kind of talking about that a little bit more, but on a different angle. Okay. Is, okay, you go through training with the trainer. And you're going to spend anywhere from two, five, six weeks, you know, with the trainer. You're you're making training pay. And, you know, every trucking company is different, 400, 500, 600 bucks a week, whatever that company pays. Okay. You're making training pay. And you've gotten, obviously, it's not the pay you want or you're, you're going to get in the future. Um, but you've gotten acclimated to that, at least in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then you're you're going to then end up getting your own truck. You know, they're going to test you out from training again, test you out, make sure that you have learned something with the trainer before they let you loose. They give you a truck and trailer. Now it's time to start making some money by yourself. Okay. Are you necessarily ready to do it by yourself and, you know, stressful situations um, as we talk? Not not all the time, like a, a brand new driver with a regular car license. Why is insurance so high on that person when they're 16 getting their license? I have no idea what I'm doing on this road. You might get in an accident, then chances are pretty high. I think I had more tickets when I was 16 than I do now. Yeah, I, I, I got into a lot of trouble as a kid. You know, you know, guys, you know, trying to go fast and yeah, act stupid. Mm -hmm. You know how that goes. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it you're you're just not um mentally ready sometimes yeah. right off the bat you know i'm trying i'm trying to find a word to say experience yeah the experience that's what it is yeah, the, the confidence and experience mm -hmm. so you know in any company if how i pay my bills and how i make money as a company is dependent on um my contracts yeah. so I, i'm going to have you know brokered loads you know uh, loads or freight that uh, i bid on Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be loads that I have contracts with, with this company that, you know, Hey, you know, th they pay the bills, they pay, you know, a little profit, but it, it, it's, it's not the greatest, you know, pay that I want to get. Like I might have a contract where I get paid $3 a, a mile with this company, but then I have an Amazon contract. I get paid five or six, you know, that's where I make my real good profit as a company, um, is those type of loads. Those are, those are my bread and butter. The rest gets the, the job done and keeps us going. You know, if I have a brand new person and I could I could get fined, I could lose the contract. Um, and I say fine because that's late. It's not on time. Something happened. It, it, it wasn't secured right. Okay. Um, so therefore, things were broken. You know, there's a lot of things behind the scenes that could happen. I, I don't want to give my brand new guy that just got out of training that good load. So, you know, you might be in Chicago and there's three drivers in that area ready for a load and the load planner is looking at this and he's seeing, okay, I got three drivers. I've got two loads and they're both quality. I mean, the, that good contract and, and I'm going to give it to the two experienced versus the one guy that's got, you know, brand new got his own truck, you know, just got his truck. I'm, I'm going to make him wait for a brokered load or one of the lesser contract loads. It isn't going to hurt if he's late. It isn't going to hurt us if he makes a mistake. Okay. And so therefore what that does is that limits the miles that you're going to get fresh out the gate because they, they want to see how do you drive? Like, are you, a more of a night owl, you more of an early morning riser and get the job done. Are you are you a go getter or do I have to push you? You know, are you going to want to go home and then have a hard time coming back out of home and yeah. being on time? 
Um, are you a procrastinator? I got to learn your style and who you are and how you drive as a dispatcher. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to just give everything to you right out the gate and you mess up. And then my neck's on the line. Yeah. I'm going to see how you perform. And then, you know, from there, give you better opportunities. And that's yeah. with any job. You, you, you're not going to start out as manager yeah. first time at that company. You're going to start probably, you know, sweeping the floor and mopping the floor and, you know, and then working your way up. And that's how any job is. So they're going to start you. And you might that first couple of weeks make less than training pay, in all honesty. And, and that's because they're learning you. And that's the hardest transition in trucking. The most people quit their job at that company or leave the industry in that short little frame of just getting off the road with a trainer. And, you know, like, it's like that little, little box right there is like halfway to end of training with a trainer because of the trainer to the first couple of weeks of being on my own and the pay after that then you all of a sudden start seeing hey all right loads are coming in i'm starting to make some good money i'm starting to be consistent the consistency comes with the experience does it also come with the i don't know i'm just asking with the relationship with the dispatcher oh yeah i mean because it, like i just met you so well i mean you're you're dealing with different personalities yeah and and I cannot tell you that every single dispatcher out there is awesome. I cannot tell you that every single trainer is awesome. And I definitely will not ever tell you that every student or new driver is awesome. Everybody has their flaws. Yeah. Everybody sometimes is not in the perfect job that they need to be in. They want to be there, but that maybe is not the right job for them. And I say that as a realist in this situation of your dispatcher might be the problem or you might be the problem. Okay. You, you might have a bad dispatcher. It might be you, but here's, here's the, here's the issue. I can't tell the company that you are a bad dispatcher. If I'm also a bad driver. True. And yeah. what would make you a bad driver though? Like okay. what is a bad driver? Is in the it because I'm like crashing? Obviously, I'm a bad driver. Yeah. <laughs> but like, hey, what? I'm a ticket for being on my cell phone. Okay. Uh, or hey, if I'm late, let's say for Walmart, for instance. Okay? okay. If it's a 5 p.m. appointment time, and I got there at 5:01 or 5:02, I have seen it firsthand. They will take me and put me back into the the waiting lot for a whole another day to the next day at five o'clock because I was not on time. I lost a whole day's worth of work because of my timeliness, you see? Okay. Being late. Um, what can make you late? I mean, I guess this is gonna be in our next show. I mean, in all honesty, they're, they're gonna give you plenty of time in the load. Do they? Yeah, because they're looking at your, the load planners and the dispatchers, they're communicating with each other about how many hours you have available when your shift is going to end um then they factor in based on 45 miles an hour in case there's traffic yeah and you know and breaks of taking of, need, of you needing to take a 10 hour break they're going to give you this run with this appointment time because it it fits you it's where you're going to be and it fits in your time clock um especially the way technology is you know it's a little bit different than it was when it was all on paper. You know, obviously yeah. you so can make it happen. You we'll better make, make it happen back in the day. That, right? But yeah, but it, it, in this situation, they're going to make sure you can, you have the time available. Like I had, I was a dispatcher once and I had a guy pick up a load from Coke and he was picking it up south of Atlanta and had to take it to, uh, I believe it was like Pensacola uh, or Panama City, somewhere right there. There are some highways, not major highway. I'm not talking about like Highway 40 or Highway 10 or anything. I mean, there are some highways that go straight down. That should have been a seven hour drive. Okay. Next day, he's not there. Well, he went down 75 all the way to basically Jacksonville. 
okay. and then took 10 all the way across, turned it into a 13, 14 hour drive okay. and was late for his load at Coke. What would be the point of that? I just, I, I don't want to speak shocked. ill of, <laughs> uh, is it to like see family? No, I mean, it, it, that, that could like have that? been a reason, but know. with this driver, he just, um, he did what he wanted. He did what he wanted. Okay. Well, and that's what he wanted to do. And he obviously cost the company money and fuel. Okay. He obviously cost the money and uh, fines for being late. And uh, we couldn't get him on the other load we had ready for him at that time. So now we had to cancel that run and give him something else, you know, when we could. And, and, and that's where. It's for student drivers. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, if you look at any, this is this is going back to what you said about companies. They're going to make about the same everywhere. But yet they, they constantly say, which company is better? All okay. the time. Which company is better? Oh, well, is this company or this company? Like, dude, it's the same thing. I promise like, everybody got free. Yeah. <laughs> But but this company not had company not but this company had a three point one review, but this company had three point. They're all going to be about three stars, and here's why. In any industry, if you go to eat food at a restaurant, are you uh, the cu uh, the customer, or are you the employee that gives those reviews? You're the customer. You know, you're as a customer saying, oh, there was a hair in my food or the service was bad or it took them two hours to bring our, our drinks. You know, you are the customer. Well, a customer like Kroger's, Tyson, Coca-Cola, Amazon, they're not leaving reviews for those trucking companies. They're giving them awards for their service, for their time, for their effort. The reviews are coming from employees and you're not going to see all the good ones because Usually when people are happy, they, they don't have time to write something good or bad about you because they, they've got their life moving forward. But when you're bitter about something, then, you know, that's when you do. And in, in the situations as a dispatcher going back, I made it to where that driver that was late because he was late again and it was issues every single day, making me look bad. Guy, he's probably retired now. I, I don't know. Um, he was a, uh, he was an accident waiting to happen. Um, he, and I don't like to talk bad about people. He was just, he was just not meant for that type of delivery, you know, on time kind of thing. And he, I put it in this way because he kept getting like that. I needed to teach him a lesson of either you do it the way you're supposed to do it or, Hey, you're, you're going to have to find you another job. But if I fire him, I'm going to have to pay quite a bit in, you know, you know, unemployment, things like that. So a lot of companies, what they do is they start giving you, you know, runs that might take, you know, one day to do, but they give you two or three days to do it. In, okay. And then the driver leaves saying, well, they never gave me any freight. They never gave me miles. Well, the reason is because you couldn't do the job when you were asked to do it. So we had to give you stuff that we knew you could be on time for. If you got one day's worth of work, and we give you two days to do it, you better be on time. You know, that's the kind of things that they're they're going to do in order to get the job done and not risk losing, you know, money or a bad reputation. So yeah. then the employee goes on there and it because everybody this day and age is it's not my fault. It's someone else's fault, you know, and that's where that comes into the factor. They're all rated the same. Yeah, I know. Right. So they're they're typically all about the same. And that goes back to what we were saying um, about the other. Um, it, all the companies are about the same. They all have about the same reviews for the first time, the driver, you know, um, you're, you're dealing in that kind of situation. And that jumping ship in that period of time, you're not going to find a better company. They're all about the same. And, you know, getting through that orientation through that transition into your own truck is typically the hardest time. Okay. And then after that happens, it's usually smooth sailing. Yeah, I think so too, because I've met um, a lot of truckers who, after they get over that hump, um, you just enjoy just sticking into the company. Cause yeah. like you said, you know, you end up doing orientation all over again. You end up losing time again. Plus, the longer you are with companies, the more re awards you get or yeah. rewarded. And 
a lot of trucking companies I've noticed they're they're gearing towards you know in um, appreciating their employees. Yeah, incentivizing them for long term. Yeah, efforts. which is really nice to have, and especially for truck drivers who sometimes they feel like they're not appreciated even though they're like the backbone of our whole country. Yeah. So thank you so much, truck drivers. <laughs> Definitely. Um, 